Okay, um, how is cat food different than dog food? And will it hurt either one if they eat the other's food? Because I've a house sat for people where they had all the bowls lined up, they mm -hmm. had a dog and two cats, and then the water bowl. So number one, is it harmful if they drink out of each other's water bowl? Two different species, and then what if one eats the other's food? Okay, water bowl is fine. Okay, okay. okay. Um, food, with cat food, it's higher in fat and higher in protein. Okay. So dogs love it. Okay. Dogs love cat poop because it's digested high fat and high protein. <laughs> I'm sure every dog owner out there realizes they've got to keep that cat litter box covered. Ooh. Hey. So a dog sees cat food as a treat. A cat could not live an entire long life on dog food because okay. it nutritionally isn't right for them. Okay. Um, the other thing I want to say about cats, there's a recent study out showing that their metabolism changes at age eight and above. Okay. So at eight and above, we need to get more liquid into them, okay, because sometimes kidneys start to slow down. So I would advise trying to change to a canned diet in a cat eight and above and even when you give them canned, add water to it. Interesting. And, okay. and add warm water. Because okay. think about their prey. Their prey is warm. When they're catching a mouse or something outside, you know, in, when they're living outside or where they came from. Okay. Um, so warm water in that food. You want to get as much fluid into them to keep those kidneys healthy as possible. So eight and above. Right. Okay. And then um, because you're so yourself conscious of what you're eating, what do you like to recommend as the best type of diets for both dogs and cats? Well, that's a loaded question because, you know, people are going for these boutique mm -hmm. brands of food. Mm -hmm. But I have to warn you that some of those companies don't even have quality control. Yes. They fly under that. the radar. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, a lot of people poo-poo the bigger companies like Hills and Royal Canine and Blue Buffalo and Imes, Mars. But they have put tons of research into their products. They're, they're evaluated by independent companies, so they're not doing research on their own thing. It's not the, you know, the fox guarding the hen house type yeah, thing. Yeah. Um, you also want a company that does independent analysis of that food once it's ready mm -hmm. to be shipped. And the reason you want that is, okay, you may, say for example, Purina, they may be buying ingredients from different suppliers. You want to make sure they vet those suppliers because that happened to Hills a few years ago where they their vitamin D levels in the food were way too high and it was putting animals into kidney failure mm -hmm. because they didn't vet that vitamin D supplier okay. so you should be able to call any dog food company or cat food company and ask these questions are you vetting your suppliers what are is your food digestible AFCO which governs pet foods isn't a they just check to make sure you have the right nutrients in there. They're not regulatory. They can't enforce anything. Mm -hmm. um, so you and I could produce pet food, okay, as long as it met AFCO requirements. But is it digestible? Mm -hmm. I mean, are they absorbing those nutrients? So digestibility is not, um, it, it doesn't have to be put on the bags of food. But you should be able to call that company and ask, what is the digestibility of this diet? Do you do, you do uh, research, peer-reviewed research? Do you analyze your food before it gets sent out? So I'm sure when you do that, you're going to find there'll be a lot of discussion around the answers of that. Okay. And don't rely on internet um, evaluators because if you read those, you'll see at the bottom, they're usually run by mm -hmm. a food company or an independent mm -hmm. that gets money from a food company. So it, that's a, a loaded question. It's very difficult. Um, you just need to ask that company a lot of questions. Okay, and then any other, oh, I know, I was in a pet store yesterday, and, you know, a lot of them sell these cookies, like yes. treats, those kind of things. Do you think those are okay? Well, or? I happen to use, and maybe I sound mean, but I happen to use my own dog food as a treat. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, uh, we, we bought treats for one of our dogs one year, mm -hmm. And she kept drinking tons of water and peeing. And I, we were in Florida at the time. And I took her to my best friend, who's an internal medicine specialist. Couldn't find anything wrong with her. And the treats were loaded with sodium. So okay. all those tests that she went through, mm -hmm. thankfully, nothing was wrong with her. Yeah. But it bottled down to the treats. Yeah. So I just used the food they're on. And by the way, the other good idea with food is 
it's a good idea to switch off the food every several months. Oh. Because just for example, if a food company is having a problem okay. and you're on that food forever, you're, you're getting away from that problem, mm -hmm. whatever that problem mm -hmm. may be. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't hurt to switch off, but when you switch, you've got to wean onto the new food, mix them two together okay. over a week. Okay. You can't abruptly sense. stop one diet and start another. Okay, that's, I wouldn't have thought of that. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there anything you'd like to add on that topic? Well, that some, some dogs need to be on prescription diets, okay. and I will tell you prescription diets are actually held to higher standards. Okay. than um, regular over-the-counter foods. They okay. also have a better omega-3, omega-6 ratio, mm -hmm. and there's also more research put into them. Okay. So, for example, I could feed my dogs anything I want. Mm -hmm. They eat Purina EN, which is a diet that's an easy digested diet that's prescription, because that diet I know is held to higher standards. Okay, yeah. that's good. Um, getting back to, you know, most people hopefully know not to give their dog or cat Oh, that would want to eat chocolate, but yeah. what other really no-no foods are there when it comes to your pets? Food? Well, the xylitol in, in dogs, you know, the artificial sweetener. Okay. Um, things like onions and garlic and macadamia nuts. Mm -hmm. uh, too much onion and garlic can break down the red blood cells. Okay. Um, cats, are, cats are funny because cats will lick, you've heard of minoxidil, uh, Rogaine for mm -hmm. people, you know, to, to regrow hair. Cats love that. So you get someone, say a gentleman that's using that, puts a little on his uh -oh. head, and then the, and he's you know back on his pillow, and the cat comes and licks that pillow. Just that little bit of Rogaine is toxic to a cat. Wow. So there's a lot, and cats for some reason like antidepressant, human antidepressant drugs, <laughs> oh, and so funny. they'll lick those pro, you know those not Prozac but those type of drugs, and those are toxic as well. And and while we're talking about it, um, Tylenol. No, Never for yeah, a cat. Yeah. They can take teeny amounts of aspirin, although we don't use it for cl anti-clotting anymore in the cat. We use a different drug. But you would think, uh, I always tell people cats are not small dogs. Yeah. Cats can be totally um, different to, like, like I said, the Rogaine <laughs> as opposed to dogs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and if you go online, you can, like Pet Poison Hotline, that has, they have just whole lists of things that you've got to be careful with. Okay. It's almost like I think if somebody adopts a pet, they should go to that hotline yeah, right agree. away and become yeah. familiar with just some basics. Especially a new pet owner. So they're not panicking. They already have a few guidelines that they can think of. And getting back to a cat, what about them eating human tuna? Well, for, as their sole source, no. It's, okay. it's vitamin B deficient. But okay. they can have a little tuna every once in a while. And actually, we use tuna juice or tuna oil to give pills to cats. Okay. which we'll talk about later. Um, hopefully we'll have a little um, a demo, a yes. demo <laughs> here with little K, one of my cats, to show how to give a pill okay. because it's never easy. So, and it's hard to disguise a pill. Cats are very smart, yeah, the, yeah. smarter than we are. Yes, I'm sure. And, and he's coming in the shop right of the demo. Okay. Well, the reason oh, I okay. asked that, again, when I housed it, the minute I opened that can of tuna, oh, man, they oh. just show up because they can smell oh. it. And one time I was eating at their little kitchen table you know, some tuna, and I had to go get a nap, yeah. and, and I turned around, and there's Toby in the chair just yeah. eating a tuna, and I'm like, okay, well, whatever. That, it happens a lot to Thanksgiving turkeys with the dog. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah I, that I would imagine, too. So, okay, as long as we clarify that they shouldn't be giving human No, as, as their to, sole food for okay. the rest of their life. I mean, maybe a little accidental thing. Oh, yeah, fine. absolutely. But, okay, very good.